All right, the very first step we have to do before we start programming our RGB tree is we need to configure our Pixlite controller. Um, so what we're using is our Pixlite plug and play. This process is exactly the same whether you use just a Pixlite 16 controller by itself, the Pixlite 4, etc., any of the controllers from Pixlite. This will be the same process. So in this example, we are using a plug and play, but it would uh, hold true for anything. Um, so what we have is our wireless router and we've taken our controller and we've plugged it directly into our router. And if we look in here, of course our plug and play is made up of a Pixlite 16 and you can see that that network connection just plugs straight into Pixlite 16. So again, if you didn't have the plug and play set up, you would just plug your Pixlite 16 straight into your router. And then what we're going to do is we'll plug this system in so it has power. So again, our power supply and everything is built in in this scenario. So if you didn't um, have the, the plug and play enclosure, you'd still need your power supply to power the board. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to just plug this into the wall. And the next step is we'll uh, find it on our network. So now that we have our Pixlite controller plugged into our router, we've basically put it on our home network. So our next step is to get the Avitech Assistant software. If you have a Mac, you can go out to the App Store and search for it and download it there. If you have a PC, you'll have to go out to Avitech's website and download it from their website. This software basically is what we're going to use to configure our Pixlite controller. So with the software open, we can hit the search button and you'll see all the Pixlite controllers that are currently on our network. Of course, in our case, we just have the one controller plugged in. We select our controller, and we have our start universe is one. If we had multiple controllers on our system, that might be a different number. For example, if I had two Pixlite 16s, I'd have one controller that would have a start universe of one, and then my second controller would have a start universe of 17. And, uh, that's how you do if you had multiple controllers for your light show. In this case, we just have one. Our pixels per string is 170. Now on our tree that we've built, we have only 47 pixels per channel. But what I wanna do is set this to 170 so I can expand it later. If I wanted to make that tree bigger next season perhaps, or I wanted to add a star or something like that, I don't want to have to plug my controller back into my network and change my pixels per string. It's kind of a pain to do. So what I'm going to do is put it at the max of 170 to start with, and then I don't have to worry about it any longer. Our Ethernet protocol is E131, and then our start channel, of course, is 1. You can also go into Advanced, and there's some various settings here, but for our purposes, we're going to go with the stock settings. But what we can see is that all of our 16 outputs all have 170 pixels and they all have 510 channels. And I just want to remind folks that each pixel takes up three channels. So if you took 170 and multiplied it by three, you'd get 510. That's how we get 510. Red, blue, and green are each a channel per pixel. So that can be a little bit confusing compared to traditional lights, but definitely we have 510 channels per output on our Pixlite controller. So we can put on all 16 of these 170 pixels per output. We can change our intensity limit if we didn't want them to go bright. We could change that to 80 or 90 percent and then we can put in all pixels if we wanted. But in this scenario we don't have to do that so we're just going to go with the standard settings. Under LEDs, we have the pixel IC type with the Pixlite. There's various types of ICs you can choose from. We built our tree using WS2811 pixels. All the pixels that we currently sell are WS2811 pixels. But if you had other types of pixel ICs, you certainly could set up your Pixlite controller here to do that. So we've selected our 2811. And our RGB order is RGB. And then under miscellaneous, this is where we can name it. If we wanted to change it something, 
different, we could. We've called this the LED Warehouse Plug and Play 16. If you need to update your firmware, you could do that here as well. And you can see that each bank is currently 5 volts. This particular Plug and Play 16 is a 5 volt system. If you had the 12 volt system, which we typically stock and sell, it's going to say 12 volts here. And that's all there is to it for this part of it to set this up. So now that we have our Pixlite controller set up, we're going to go ahead and open up Xlights, and then we're going to set up Xlights to match how we just set up our controller. So we're going to add an E131. If you remember correctly, we set that up as a E131. We had starting universe was one. We had 16 universes in our setup, and each universe had 510 channels. So this matches exactly what we just did in the Avitech Assistant. So we hit OK and it populates us for what our channels are going to be. So we're going to save our setup. Then we're going to come over to Layout and what we built was the 180 degree tree. So we're going to create a model. So we click Models, New, and I'm just going to call this RGB Tree to give it a name. Our display as is a 180 degree tree. If you remember when we built our tree, just the front half of that tree had strands on it. We are using RGB nodes. We have 16 actual strings. And if you remember, we only had 47 pixels per string. And they also were just one strand per string. We're gonna start with our channel of one, our starting corner is the bottom left. So when we're looking at the front of the tree, if you remember our pixel that is on the left hand side, that strip that is on the left hand side is channel one. So that is the bottom left is where we're gonna start from. We have this checked as part of our display. That's gonna show it up on our preview window. Now over here is where it gets a little interesting and I think gets a little confusing for folks when they're setting up RGB. So what we have is 47 pixels per strand. So that translates to 141 channels. So let's look at channel one. All right. So this was universe one. We decided that's output number one on our controller and plugged into output number one on our controller is a strand that has 47 RGB pixels on it which 47 times three is 141. So our start channel is one, our end channel is 141. Here's the trick. That channel, when we just set it up a second ago, we told it had 510 channels. So my next channel could not start at 142 because it's gonna think that it's on a strand that doesn't exist. So Xlice has a nice little shortcut for this, individual start channels. What that means is that each one of these 16 is an actual start channel. So if we go back to our setup page that we just had open, we would start to be able to put our start channels in here. So this actually is going to start on channel 511 because we told it that universe one had 510 pixels to it so we could add on to it later. So this one is gonna start at 511. It's gonna automatically calculate my end is 651. That is 141 later. It does the math for me. Now on channel three is gonna be another 510 greater. So that is gonna start at 1021. Mm -hmm so forth, so we'll fill these in really quick. Twenty forty one, two, five, five, one, three, zero, six, one. This is information, I have a cheat sheet that I'm looking at to type this in. This is, if you forget, you can go right back to you can hit OK here, go back to your setup page, and it lists what your starting channels are in that setup page. A nice little cheat is you do a print screen and, and either print it out or, or have it on a, a second screen that you can uh, look off from.
or if we do this long enough, you can probably get really good at uh, your multiplication tables as it pertains to uh, 510. Last one is going to be 76.51. And so now our tree knows that it's starting on 16 different inputs, and these are our actual start channels. So we hit OK. And we're going to hit OK. And what it did is it gave us a rendering of what our 180 degree tree looks like. So we can come in here and we can size and shape it to kind of what it looks like. So what we're gonna do is roughly there, that's probably about what it looks like. So we're gonna hit our save button. So next, if we wanted to build a sequence really quick, we can come over to our sequencer. We're gonna do a new sequence. There's a wizard that'll step you through everything for Simplicity, let's do an animation sequence at 20 frames per second. We're going to skip all of this info and we're just going to hit done. They created us a really quick 30 second sequence. I'm going to left click and hit edit display elements. Add. And then in the list I'm going to pick RGB tree. And then I'm going to close this to be out of my way. So now I can hit T for different timings. And this is what we kind of put in to put in some different display elements. So I'm going to stretch my timings out every 5 or 10 seconds or so here. And then over here, we have our list of effects. So currently it says off. And then you'll notice way down here, we have just a little tiny picture of our tree. What I like to do is kind of bring it out here so it looks a little bit nicer. So I'm going to select an effect. I don't know. Let's pick snowflakes because snowflakes are neat. I'm going to pick blue and white. And then I'm going to drag this effect over here and you can see in my preview the snowflakes are showing up on my preview so I can come over here and adjust this effect a little bit with max flakes there's different types of snowflakes we can use so let's go back to the first one and say max flakes is 48 and then our speed is here so this is down here in our corner this is what our tree should look like when it's plugged in and working correctly. So next I'm going to click over here and let's pick um, a different. Let's do spirals because spirals are neat. And let's say it's red, blue, and green and get rid of the white. And let's drag this over here. And you can see down here in our little preview, it's creating a spiral effect. And I think that looks pretty neat as it is. So I'm not going to mess with our effects at all, but you certainly could. I'm going to click on our next section here, and let's pick something. Oh, I don't know. Let's do a pinwheel that is yellow and blue. And we'll drag that over, and we'll do a pinwheel effect. We can have five arms if we wanted to and adjust our size just a little bit and let's put a little twist into it i think that looks pretty neat we'll click on our next section here and let's do something unusual like fire and Fire, you don't get to pick colors on, but it does kind of what looks like a fire effect. We can change the height a little bit. But let's put it kind of in the middle. And we can do a hue shift, and I don't know, that's kind of a neat 
blue cool fire. So let's uh, pick that and let's find one more effect and let's do bars and let's do a bunch of colors on bars. And we'll drag this over and bars is doing that. We can increase our cycles to make it go faster or slower. We can change the direction up to down, um, expand, it's kind of a neat one. Let's do expand, that looks kind of neat. So we're gonna come up here, we're gonna go file, save sequence as, and we're gonna call it our RGB tree testing, and we're gonna hit save. So we can come back to our layout if we wanted to and play our sequence and we'll do a, an actual live preview of what our tree should look like. Now if we had our Pixlite controller network to our computer so we took that Ethernet card and we plugged it straight into the computer we could hit this button here which is output to lights. If we hit that, that would output to your ethernet cable and it would actually be playing on the tree exactly how it looks on this. So what we're gonna do is actually plug this into a, uh, plug the computer into the controller, have everything hooked back up and we'll play the sequence so you can see how our tree looks compared to exactly what we just programmed. All right, we have our computer plugged into our tree and we uh, of course click the icon that says uh, display uh, light output. So our computer is sitting in the background there uh, outputting the uh, sequence. We set it to repeat. So you can see uh, the effects that we put into our sequence. It looks pretty similar to uh, the computer generated one on the screen. So I'd like to thank everybody for watching. If you were uh, curious, I'll put another link here of the video of how we built this tree so you can see how the whole thing got put together. And then now hopefully uh, doing some quick uh, programming with X-Lights shows you um, how kind of easy this actually was to put together. So once you get to your RGB project, I encourage you to uh, keep playing with X-Lights and playing with all the effects. And another reminder, you can also just download X-Lights and play with the effects without actually having any uh, lights installed at all just so you can kind of get the swing of the program. So as always if you have any questions you can give us a call or you can comment down below.